This is China Briefing. We bring you the latest content on China's current affairs, economy and society from authoritative global media, as well as authoritative and exclusive analysis. If our content is of value to you, please subscribe to China Briefing. Xi Jinping and Putin have the world's most important undeclared alliance. Foreign policy reports that Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin have a more important relationship than most official U.S. alliances today. While geography, history, culture and economics give both countries reason to be adversaries, Xi Jinping has lived up to his expectations of a relationship with Putin that is of great importance to both sides. Russian-Chinese economic ties have grown significantly, with China becoming Russia's top trading partner and the largest buyer of Russian oil and natural gas. In addition to economic ties, China and Russia are functionally equivalent to a military alliance. The two countries share intelligence and threat assessments, and cooperate in rocket engine development. Diplomatically, China and Russia vote together in the United Nations Security Council and strengthen each other's political narratives. Their success in forming a new alliance of nations, including the BRICS Group and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, suggests that their declarations are more than just aspirations. The article argues that the U.S. confrontation with both China and Russia has helped to create a coalition of the aggrieved. This allowed Xi to reverse the successful U.S. trilateral diplomacy of the 1970s, which widened the gap between China and the Soviet Union and contributed significantly to the U.S. victory in the Cold War. As a result, the United States will have to understand that it is facing the most important undeclared alliance in the world. Here is the China briefing. China's performing arts industry hopes to recover after new epidemic lifts. The South China Morning Post reports that China's performing arts industry has shown signs of recovery since the massive wave of coronavirus infections that swept the country last December after restrictions were lifted. The recent easing of restrictions on access to foreign performers has stirred hopes for a strong rebound. China resumed granting permission for commercial exhibitions from abroad on Monday after a three-year hiatus. According to Kappa, Audiences returned to live performances during the Lunar New Year holiday in late January, generating 378 million renminbi, 54.9 million US dollars, in revenue. More than 9,400 commercial shows were held during the week-long holiday, an increase of more than 40% over last year and more than 20% over pre-pandemic 2019. Pent-up demand in sectors such as live performance and tourism is expected to be a key driver of a broader recovery in the world's second-largest economy. Beijing has set a goal of achieving a 5% GDP growth rate this year. Xiao Yu, chief economist at Oriental Securities, said growth will be heavily skewed toward private consumption. Recent data show that there are already signs of a rapid recovery, mainly in services and offline spending, he said. As a theater lover, Rachel Zhang, a Shanghai University student, has noticed an increasing number of young people coming from outside the city to see plays and musicals in recent months. Previously, most college students were forbidden to leave their cities or were simply confined to their campuses because of concerns about the new coronavirus. Now they are free to travel, she said. The absence of overseas productions in the past few years has prompted local producers to commission more local productions, but many are hastily assembled and of low quality. Here is the China briefing. What TikTok's roast in Parliament means for the future of the app. The Economist reports that TikTok CEO Xu Zichu was grilled by U.S. lawmakers about the potential threat the popular short-form video app poses to the country's national security. A rare bipartisan hawkishness toward China confronted Chu with a variety of questions, with national security issues dominating the five-hour meeting. 
The exponential growth in popularity of the Chinese-owned TikTok among young people has raised greater concern among lawmakers about what data it might collect and the potential for it to be used for propaganda on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. Chu tried to address those concerns and reassure lawmakers by discussing the Texas project, which has been in development for years and aims to isolate U.S. data from its parent company to China's TikTok. Chu said the goal of the project is to store all U.S. data in the United States and by the end of this year on servers operated by U.S. company Oracle, while also subjecting it to regular third-party inspections. The project's budget is $1.5 billion, but several lawmakers remain unconvinced and have called for a ban on the app. TikTok could see a broader ban in the U.S., several Democratic and Republican members of Congress support the move, and several limited bans on the app are already in place. However, it is unclear how a broader TikTok ban would be enforced, and companies are concerned that they may lose exposure to TikTok's young audience. This situation highlights the need for companies operating in sensitive countries to make provisions to assure authorities that their platforms meet the regulatory requirements of the relevant countries. This is China Briefing. Younger Americans More Friendly to China The Economist reports that recent polls show significant differences in Americans' attitudes toward China based on age group. According to research by The Economist and YouGov, about 25% of American adults aged 18 to 44 view China as an enemy, compared to about 52% of Americans aged 45 and older. Similarly, younger Americans are less likely to view China as an enemy, with many saying they view China as friendly. Among U.S. adults, only those aged 45 or older have such a positive view. Perceptions of China have also shifted along partisan lines, with both Republicans and Democrats increasingly viewing it as an adversary. Among Republicans, 48% currently view China as an enemy, while 34% of Democrats agree, up from 20% and 10% when Donald Trump entered the White House. These views may have practical consequences, as many U.S. states have banned the use of Chinese-owned TikTok on state-owned devices due to national security concerns. Here is the China Briefing. Art Basel Hong Kong welcomes back Chinese millionaires after three years. Bloomberg reports that as Art Basel Hong Kong returns in full force from March 23 to March 25, a key indicator of success will be the spending of collectors from mainland China. Chinese collectors lead the world in terms of their share of $1 million spending, and their median art spending of $475,000 is among the highest in the world. Nick Simeonovic, director of the Gallery Gagosian in Hong Kong, believes that basically anyone who has come to Art Basel from China in the past will come back this time. An increasing number of mainland collectors are younger and have more international works than older collectors, as many of them travel frequently, says Pearl Lam of Pearl Lam Gallery. The coronavirus has affected the sale of traditional Chinese paintings, among other things. Art fairs are bouncing back, with Art Basel Hong Kong hosting 177 galleries this year, compared to 130 last year, and 31 VIP events during the fair. Hauser and Wirth sold George Kondo to a private collection between Hong Kong and Los Angeles for $47,500,000, while White Cube sold Anselm Kiefer and Damien Hurst for $10,900,000 and $525 million respectively. White Cube sold works by Anselm Kiefer and Damien Hurst to collectors in China for US dollars and US US$525,000,000 respectively. Hong Kong's lack of tariffs, VAT or estate duty on artworks, combined with low costs, has made the city a regional hub for the art market. Singapore recently launched its own art fair in January, which has some similarities to Hong Kong but with an 8% tax on goods and services. Three of the world's top auction houses have committed to expanding their offices in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong has stronger logistics and warehousing facilities, 
underscoring its position as the region's premier center for the art trade. Here is China briefing. Xi Jinping just bought himself a headache in Moscow. Bloomberg reports that Chinese President Xi Jinping returned from Russia after a meeting with President Vladimir Putin in which the Chinese leader clearly took the lead. China can rest assured that a Russia weakened by Ukraine's war of aggression will have to rely on China for trade, technology and diplomatic support in the years to come. While some may be concerned about the strengthening of China, Chinese leaders will soon find that they need to work hard to maintain their strategic partnership with Russia. The interests of China and Russia are almost identical to those of China and the Soviet Union in the 1950s, when both powers were bound by a shared fear and resentment of U.S. dominance. Then, as now, they shared an alliance, but within a decade it would collapse in spectacular fashion. Cunning invitations from China appear to have been backed by China in Mao's 1958 plan to confront the United States directly. Today, the first area where disagreements may spill over into the open is in determining how much confrontation they should have with the West. Xi Jinping prefers a longer game, while Putin has deployed an aggressive strategy. Moreover, resentment over each side's contribution to the relationship could quickly erode it. The more dire Russia's situation and its economic dependence on China, the more sensitive and concerned Beijing must be to avoid belittling ordinary Russians who may not fully understand how much richer and more powerful China has become. This is China Briefing. Compared to US, Xi Jinping has no historical baggage. Bloomberg reports that Chinese President Xi Jinping is seen by many outside the West as a global peacemaker according to Bloomberg's Pankaj Mishra. Countries in the Global South are said to welcome Xi's offer of mediation between warring factions in Ukraine because of inflation and shortages caused by the conflict. In addition, they are willing to accept Putin's argument that the United States and NATO are responsible for starting the war. In contrast to the United States, which has a poor record of failed wars and hypocritical moralizing, Xi Jinping has little historical baggage in many former Western regions. Mishra further noted that China is benefiting from the mediation agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia, which provides it with further credibility. According to Bloomberg, cement price inflation and subsequent shortages are becoming a major threat to President Joe Biden's infrastructure and manufacturing reflux ambitions and the Federal Reserve's attempts to stem the price spike. Cement prices in the U.S. are rising at a rate of 15% a year, and prices across Europe are rising by as much as 30% in some countries, which does not bode well for the U.S. The country's heavy reliance on cement imports has added to the recent pressure. In another news report, Bloomberg reported that Manchester United Football Club is attracting a lot of bidding interest, with a third aspiring player only entering the bidding war. Matthew Brooker argues that the race bears little resemblance to financial reality, with the £6 billion price tag making it the most expensive Premier League acquisition to date based solely on revenue. Here's the China briefing. Spain's Prime Minister plans to visit Beijing for talks with Xi Jinping on China's peace framework. The New York Times reports that Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez will travel to China this week for talks with President Xi Jinping and will discuss the way China is negotiating peace between Russia and Ukraine. The Spanish leader will seek to discover firsthand what Xi's framework for peace includes and will convey the message that the situation in Ukraine must be stabilized before negotiations can begin. She recently visited Moscow in an attempt to garner broader support for his plans. British exit from the European Union and climate change are also expected to be on Sanchez's agenda, as well as the promotion of trade between Spain and China. The United States and Ukraine's other allies have rebuffed China's ceasefire proposal, arguing that it would give the Russian regime a chance to consolidate its recent territorial gains. Sanchez has long been an outspoken supporter of Ukraine, even ensuring that Spain would send main battle tanks to assist in its war effort. However, 
He has also expressed a willingness to see China as a mediator in the peace talks, a position that sets him apart from other European leaders. Starting in July, Spain will hold the rotating presidency of the European Union for the next six months, which will give Sanchez even more influence over the EU. The Prime Minister will begin his visit to China next Thursday, May 23, with a series of economic meetings on Hainan Island, before heading to Beijing for talks with Xi Jinping and other senior Chinese officials. Here is the China briefing. No, Putin didn't kneel in front of Xi Jinping. Deutsche Welle reports that a fake image purporting to show Russian President Vladimir Putin kneeling in front of Chinese President Xi Jinping has been viewed more than a million times on social media. Experts have concluded that the image was generated by an artificial intelligence application. Many of the details in the image, including the large size of Putin's shoes and the oversized head of the man on his knees, are typical inaccuracies that occur when using artificial intelligence to create images. The images generated by artificial intelligence are becoming more realistic, but often contain errors, especially in the representation of the hands and ears. Here is the China briefing. World's largest beef trade route to resume. Australia's ABC reports that China has resumed beef imports from Brazil after a temporary ban was imposed earlier this month. Brazilian officials said the Chinese Customs General Administration lifted the embargo after confirming that Brazil's mad cow disease prevention and control system met Chinese health requirements. Several of Brazil's top beef processors are said to be losing nearly $25 million a day because of the trade ban. Brazilian beef is the world's largest protein trader, and the country is the largest supplier of beef to China. China imported a record amount of beef last year, about 26,000 tons, and forecasts that consumption will continue to grow in 2023. This is China Briefing. Chinese nationalists express discontent over treatment of giant pandas. The Economist reports that animal advocates expressed concern about the health of giant pandas Ya Ya and Lulu at the Memphis Zoo in the United States last year. After Luli's death in February, Ya Ya was reportedly seen without a tuft of hair and animal lovers became increasingly distressed. Chinese internationalists claim that the condition of the giant pandas leased to the Memphis Zoo as part of China's panda diplomacy is indicative of anti-Chinese sentiment in the United States. On the other hand, Chinese officials have called for calm, saying the bears are being properly cared for. More than 20 countries rent giant pandas from China for up to $1 million a year, highlighting China's conservation success and generating additional revenue. The animal's potential poor health has led some Chinese in the United States to launch a campaign to return Yaya to China. Although Yaya's lease expires in April, the question has been raised as to whether the practice of panda diplomacy should be reduced. Concerns have been heightened by the apparent health problems facing the two 22-year-old bears as their lease comes to an end. Here's the China Briefing. Five key moments from the TikTok CEO's belligerent hearing before Congress. Bloomberg reports that TikTok CEO Sho Chu tried to protect his company from a potential U.S. ban or forced sale during a four and a half hour congressional hearing that rarely strayed from its hostile beginnings. At a news conference in Beijing, Commerce Department spokesman Xu Jiaten said the Chinese government must approve any sale to a U.S. entity and Chu defended TikTok as no different from other social media giants, saying his company was trying to adopt stronger protections than its competitors because of the intense scrutiny. Lawmakers don't seem convinced by this argument, citing TikTok's tremendous growth in the United States. Rep. Michael McCall, Republican Texas, said Chow's testimony proves TikTok needs to be sold or banned. The Texas Republican chairs the Foreign Affairs Committee, which has jurisdiction over legislation that would ban the app or force its sale. Senator Marco Rubio, a Republican from Florida, took aim at what he called lies and omissions, and said the momentum to ban TikTok is growing. The huge popularity of TikTok among young people, and voters, 
has raised concerns about its content vetting policies, including whether TikTok's powerful algorithms are providing harmful content to people who may be dealing with addiction or considering suicide. We described TikTok CEO Sho Zi Chu's testimony today at the Beltway as a catastrophic moment that could catalyze more calls from lawmakers and the White House to ban TikTok in the U.S. if the company doesn't seek to spin off and force a sale of Chinese parent binary jump, Dan Ives of Wedbush Securities said in a report. Gus Balericus, a Florida Republican, played a TikTok video about the suicide, with dramatic music playing from a speaker in the room, and pressed Chow on whether he had any control over the algorithm. Chow later told the committee that he does not allow his children to use TikTok. My children live in Singapore, and in Singapore, we don't have experience with under 13, he said. Keep up with the latest China-related news, analysis and policy briefings from around the world with China Briefing. Our team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media, think tanks, government agencies and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easily accessible and highly valuable information that is tailored to your specific area of interest. We understand the importance of keeping abreast of the latest developments related to China and aim to make this information accessible to our readers. Visit our website at http colon slash slash to join the conversation and learn about the latest news related to China.